Welcome, friends. We so much apologize for the delay. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty with one of the systems that we usually use. So we had to come up with some solutions on the spot just spontaneously and, and find a new format for today. So we really appreciate your patience and sticking with us. Um, it's just exciting to be here and sending lots of love first and foremost to Candace and then also to Johan. Johan is on vacation and we're wishing him well. So I'm so happy to be here hosting the Facebook Live and we are thrilled and excited to be hearing from Robin Goddard today. Hi Robin, nice to see you. Hi Mia, hello everybody, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I look forward to our time together. Robin and I are both in uh, Bolinas, California on a kind of an overcast day. And uh, nice to see that some of you are here from, let's see, all around the world. We'd love to hear from you during this interview. If you have any questions, where you're um, viewing from, usually this is a, a global audience, which really makes it exciting. And just to know that you know, we really are a worldwide community and uh, supporting each other so powerfully and just, you know, able to share um, just in a, in a very global way. So the uh, topic today is really focused on relationship, empowering relationships, harmonizing relationships. First and foremost, the relationship with ourselves as this powerful intelligence but then also relationships uh, in particular uh, really focused on like family relationships, whether it's family of origin or with our partners, our children, maybe our siblings. You know, so much goes on oftentimes in these relationships, just these like family dynamics that come up and are created over time and kind of our habitual uh, patterns and ways of relating or avoidance of relationships. And, um, you know, here in the Balance View training, all of this is addressed, empowered, and completely open, clarified, and resolved. And so it's, Robin, you have an incredible story of kind of a, a before, you know, during and after, before what happened, what it was like within your family, your family of origin, your family uh, your marriage, your children, and then kind of, you know, what came about for you and what it is like now. And so we're really excited to hear from you. Shall we start with maybe a little bit of background family of origin? When I met you um, in Balance View over 10 years ago, I think it is now, your mom was really ill and we met in a, in a just a very powerful balance view training. And immediately I was like, oh, who is this? You know, this is she's just great. And I just wanted to know more about you. But you were going through a, just a really hard time uh, with your mom's illness and she was very close to death. And so maybe you could just share a little bit about that and about, you know, what relating was like for you growing up in your family of origin, kind of the training up that you had in relationship. Great. Thank you so much, Mia. Wow. Ten years. That's amazing. Over ten years. Um, yeah. OK, so my family of origin was interesting. I was uh, the youngest. I am the youngest of five siblings and um i would say my family of origin wasn't you know your kind of typical lovey dovey family it was um, more a family about like uh, competition was was like the key thing in our family and so everybody was always like pitted against everybody else and because i was the youngest i had lots of examples of relationships that I can watch along the way between my siblings and also with my parents. And, and uh, it wasn't, yeah, you know, it wasn't just a warm and fuzzy kind of environment. It was, it was very difficult for me. It was really difficult because I was really, really sensitive on the inside, but in order to kind of fit into this family unit, I had to be 
you know, really like defensive and protective and people weren't very respectful. And there was a lot of uh, demands of performance. Everything was about performing and being the best that you can be. And there were very high expectations and also very sarcastic. Like, I think the way the family showed love or connectivity was through sarcasm. And so, yeah, that that's not a very intimate way of, of being in relationship. And so there are all, all these dynamics going on. And I, I really wanted to sort of be a certain way. Like I wanted to express love and connection, but there wasn't really a place for it in my family. And so I just learned how to, uh, yeah, stay kind of a little bit separate from everybody else and, and join in with the sarcasm and the gossip and, and, uh, everything that, that didn't feel very good to me, but was all that I was seeing. And so I grew up with this, like, yeah, it was really painful because it seemed so unauthentic and I really wanted to live authentically and I wanted to connect with people authentically, but I, I just didn't know how to do it. And I wasn't seeing any role modeling for it. And so I just, I, I almost felt like an act, like an actor, an actress in a play. Like whoever was in front of me, I, I just acted how I thought that they wanted me to be so that I, I could kind of keep all the conflicts at bay and, and be sort of a peacekeeper. And so it really never felt very good for me. Uh, but nobody knew that. I think on the outside, it, it all looked fine. And I had lots of friends and I could get along. I could get along with anybody, actually. <laughs> it was fine. But on the inside, it was always very painful and, and confusing and, and frustrating, I would say. So in a nutshell, that was how it was for me. <laughs> right. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for sharing so openly. I, I'm sure many of us can relate to really having to adopt to, um, you know, just a, a childhood where there is so much going on. And that most of, or for many of us, it's actually just a survival or trying to manage the relationships the best we can. And I know that you're the youngest of five. So uh, yeah, that's just quite the position in the family as well. And so how did you bring, you know, some of this, some of this training, some of these ways that you learn to adapt and the dynamics and, you know, how you relate it. How did, how did that kind of come forward when you had your own family uh, with your spouse, you know, with your kids, with your, you know, siblings as you all became adults and yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. I was just thinking of something else while, while, um, since you asked me about my, uh, family of origin. And there was something that I want to share because it, it kind of followed me through my whole life. And it's, it's might sound kind of silly, but for me, it, it was very impactful. And that was when I was young growing up, like before I went to bed at night, I had to say, I love you to my parents. That was like a family rule or something like that. And so I remember thinking like, Oh, it was so perfunctory or, or it was so like contrived, like, I love you. It didn't really have meaning to it. It was just words. I love you. Like if you have a child and you say, you know, they hit somebody or they do something and say, you know, say you're sorry. And the kid's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. That's how it was for me. I love you. And, uh, and so that was very confusing too for me. And, and so love and relating, it was just, it was almost like, like you said, like surviving or, or manipulating or controlling. It was just, didn't have a felt sense to me, even though I really wanted it to. And so I think a lot of my relationships were like that because a lot of my relationships were also like in the realm of competition because I grew up as an athlete and, and it just seemed like all my friendship groups and, and the people that I was with socially all the time, it was in this context of competing. And so it's really hard to, to intimately connect with people that you are in competition with all the time. And so when I got older and I uh, met my husband and it was almost the same thing. He was almost like a replica of my, my mother in the same sort of relationship dynamics. And, and so I felt kind of comfortable because I had experience in how to be with somebody like that, who was 
I would say, you know, not respectful, again, very sort of demanding and manipulative and sarcastic. And, but, you know, I thought, well, that, that's just must be what relationship is all about. And so I enter that relationship in the same way, like defended and, and always trying to make peace. And, at, and on the outside, everybody thought it was fine. But on the inside, again, I was, it, it was very difficult and it, it was, I, I was really suffering with how to be authentic and how can I be, you know, how can I be relating lovingly and care, caring and compassionately when it just wasn't received or, yeah, there wasn't a landing place for it. And I also wanted to have a really close relationship with my children because I did not have a good relationship with my parents and I definitely did not have a good relationship with my mother as a daughter. So it did turn out that I had two daughters and so it was really important for me to have a good relationship with them. But, you know, I didn't, I do, do have a good relationship and it was better than I had with my mother, but it still didn't feel totally connected and authentic and some of the same dynamics that I saw as a kid with my parents, you know, they didn't really role model great relationships. They didn't role model like loving, respectful relating. And neither were my husband and I. We were doing the best we could, but now looking back on it, I see how they, my children grew up in that same kind of environment. And so try as I might to shape shift everything to micromanage it to try to be who i thought they wanted me to be who i thought i was supposed to be as a mother everything was just so difficult because i was trying 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 so hard to be something i wasn't able to just be <laughs> naturally loving and relational so yeah the same frustrations the same kind of inner, inner pain um and no place really to go with that and so I just kind of resigned myself to think that this was just the way relationships were going to be for me. And this was going to be the life I was going to live and I'll make the best of it. And it looks good on the outside. And so I guess that's just going to be how it is for me, even though I really didn't want it to be that way. I just didn't know how or where to go to change it or what to do. Right. Um, yeah, I, I completely understand, Robin. And again, thank you for sharing so openly. I'm sure many of us can relate to kind of our inside world, not really matching our outside world. And um, just to even bring that kind of deeper, you, you shared that, you know, it was painful internally, even though your life, you know, looked pretty good outside and that you could relate to anyone, you know, and you shared a little bit kind of about, you know, what, what your how you'd like resign yourself to the fact that it's going to be this certain way, but like on a day to day basis, what, what did that look like for you internally? You know, what were some of the things that just like your, your feelings about it and yeah, more thoughts about it. Hmm. Well, it's like walking around in, in a total conflict all the time, <laughs> like all this under mutter, 24 hours a day, all this under mutter, like just, you know, I think what I did was I just blamed everybody else for why I wasn't able to be relating in the way I wanted to. So, you know, there was always just this under mutter of like, oh, if, oh, first of all, my mother was ground zero. Everything went back to that. You know, if, oh, if only my mother had done this, if only she had said this to me, if only we could have had this relationship, then I would be X, Y, or Z. So everything went back to my mother. And then when I got married, everything went to my husband. Like, oh, he's the same way. Why can't he be more loving? Why can't he speak to me this way? You know, why is he, a, why am I, I being put in this position to be defensive all the time? And so I just like, uh, uh, internally, I was so uh, unconnected and I was so, you know, not present. Like I, being a character in a play is like the best way I can describe it. I just was like existing, interacting, but there was no connection there whatsoever. It was just, yeah, it was meaningless. So I was like having this ugh, terrible, this like meaningless internal life, but yet I was able to project all 
being able to be social and connecting on the outside. And so it was, God, I really hated it, I have to say. It's probably what brought me to to find Candace. But yeah, I just, even though it was really difficult, I just resigned my, like I did, I just resigned myself and made it, I made it fine, really. I made it fine, I just talked myself into it. This is, this is okay, even though I was really suffering on the inside. So I hope that answers answers your question. Yes, thank you, Robin, perfectly. And um, oftentimes it seems like this is what does bring us to make an actual choice in transforming and resolving and empowering these circumstances in our life that we just, you know, are just kind of at the end of our rope where, you know, just done with the suffering. And that's a place that you really got to, it, it sounds like, and just had even a slight opening for um, a shift and a change and some support in this way. Um, so maybe it'd be great to hear from you now, like, you know, what happened when you decided to just show up for that kind of support and um, show up in the balance view training, you know, what that was like for you. Sure. Well, I, um, I, I, I met Candace a, a little while after I had gotten divorced. I think I was divorced for, um, I don't know, maybe seven, seven or eight months or something like that. So already there was like a little bit of breathing room in my life. But like, honestly, I was so resigned to this life. I, I almost, would, I, I wasn't really seeking anything because I just was convinced that this was the way it was gonna be forever for me. But I was um, with somebody who introduced me to Candace and to her teachings. And I, I decided that I would go, go to a, a meeting that Candace was, was holding and um, it was, it was like a miracle <laughs> to me, I have to say, because I, you know, I really wanted to live authentically. That was for me, like my big sort of, you know, thought process, emotionality was always about wanting to live authentically, but never seeing anybody live authentically. And so always being conflicted by that. And then when I met Candace, that's the thing I saw first and foremost. I, I It was like, I saw in front of me somebody who was what I always knew people were intended and purposed to be like, relationally, like open, uh, present, very, like the walk and the talk were, were even. And, and, and uh, I'd never met anybody like that before. And I was just taken by that initially. And I, I knew from the very beginning that Candace was going to be somebody who not only could show me what an authentic life looked like, but she would be able to provide me with all the tools and the support necessary for me to actually finally be able to live authentically like that. And that's about all I knew in the beginning. But it was it was so powerful for me. And I... I, I, you know, like I said, I'm an athlete. And so I knew, I just knew like this was going to be the perfect coach for me. <laughs> you know, like if there's a, a somebody who can show me a, a, a different skill set for how to live life, I wanted to be around that person and I wanted to learn from that person and I wanted to see what it was about that person's life that allowed them to live the way I wanted to live. And so when I first met Candace, that's, that was sort of a magnetic attraction and still is today, <laughs> just more powerfully. And so um, everybody had spoken about the training, the 12 empowerments training and how that was like a first step. And so I thought, you know, okay, I'm gonna listen to the coach and I'm gonna do what, uh, what, I, uh, what, what the game plan is. I'm gonna follow the game plan and see if uh, I will find in my own direct experience results because I, that's all I cared about. I'm super practical and I only cared about what it was going to be like for me in my life. It was nice to hear from other people, but how was it going to land in my life? And so I don't know if everybody on this platform 
has taken the empowerments or not? Has it? No. Okay, so um, in empowerments eight and nine, it, it's it's. Um, yeah, I just came so face to face with my lifestyle and how I was blaming everybody and shaming everybody and making everybody else at fault for my lack of of well-being and my lack of relationality. And it was like a bucket of cold water got poured <laughs> over my head. It was like this amazing aha moment where I just thought, wow, you know, I am completely responsible for the life I live and I am completely responsible for how to be in relationship with people. It doesn't have anything to do with anyone else. It is my responsibility. And in the empowerment, I was given the tools of how to take responsibility. And um, first and foremost, to, to utilize the practice of resting for short moments many times. Instead of going to all these habituated patterns that I had of blaming everybody and being defended and and you know whatever stories I made up, I could just rest, like really relax with all of that undermutter that, as I said, was so powerful and on constant stream 24 hours a day. I could just learn to start to relax with all of that and, and see that it, it, it just is the way it is and it doesn't have any power to, to uh, affect the way I am in relationship. And so I, I did, I started to put the practice to the test and I, and I re remember in empowerments eight and nine, you can begin to start to make direct changes and, and uh, amend, so to speak, for, for the relationships that you wanted to see differently. And, and uh, it was so powerful for me because my mother and my ex-husband were two of the most caustic relationships I had. And, and uh, I thought that it would take me a really long time to start to address those relationships because they were so painful and they hurt so much. But the most amazing thing about these empowerments was that they were the very first relationships that I addressed because, because they were so painful. And I saw just like a relief immediately, like a, an opening around that, that pain. Like for the first time in my life, I didn't feel that pain when, when in that relationship. It was, wow, it was just so freeing. I don't know any other word to, to describe, but oh, it's like, it was like that. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I am going to take personal responsibility. And I, I could see that it doesn't have to do with anybody. Like the change I want to see is going to be the change that I, that I have first with myself knowing myself rightly and, and really understanding my own place in the relationships and then seeing that everything else will take care of itself from there. And it, it does and it has and it continues to be. And, and so all of that intimacy that I wanted and that connectivity that I wanted and the love that I wanted and how I wanted to be in relationships, it started that day as soon as I finished Empowerments 8 and 9. And I really committed to, I really committed to the practice and I committed to the support of the mainstays. And it was just miraculous. It was amazing. So I could jump to today if you want me to, just to, or if you have another. <laughs> no, it's else about that. It's really incredible to, to hear what happened and how you met Candace and, and, really just opened it it you know that's such a key what you shared you know that just how you shared that it's so clear that there was an opening you know an opening to candace's direction op an opening to the key points and pith instructions of the balance view training an opening to hearing others direct experience and and having that confirmed you know for you and your experience and then just the shift that that has taken place where, you know, you shared about you know, the blaming others and, you know, including your mom and your husband and, you know, what was going on with the kids and that it, you know, all the focus was kind of directed outward and that through the empowerment, it just, it just, you just brought it all back home. 
And because this is the place that we, you know, really have the openings, the insights, the complete transformation is right here with within us. And um, so it's really powerful to just see that, you know, this was your direct experience and that it was, you know, just showing up in your commitment that allowed for the foundational training of balance view, the 12 empowerments to, to really work its magic. Um, that it's just a great combination of us showing up in an open way, really being committed, open, open and willing, you know, choosing um, to allow that transformation in our life, inseparable along with the, you know, just powerful key points and pith instructions, the practice that you also implemented to bring about the results you, you, you know, were looking for. And I love <laughs> you shared, you know, the results are what was most important for you. And that's true with Candace too. When she, you know, developed this training and brought about the support structure that works so well for us, there were de there was a decade of comparative analysis and of research to go into uh, a training that would actually bring results. So it's great that you were just so aligned in that way and saw that right away. OK, you know, this is going to bring me results. This is what I want. And so, yes, we would love to hear about how those results have come about for you today and, and really what your life looks like. Um, in terms of, you know, just your inner life that happens from a day to day basis, how that's different, if it even is different. And also your relationships, you know, with your right now ex-husband and kids, you just have a really powerful story there. Great. Yeah, the empowerments by far were, were the greatest gift I ever gave myself that hands down greatest gift I ever gave myself. And it's a gift that keeps giving because it, it it's just so invasive and, and yeah, it, it, because I gave it to myself, I can give it to everybody else in the way that I am with everybody. So yeah, I still, I, I do, I wake up like every morning, I'm in awe of how I'm living my life today. It's amazing. But anyway, I'll, I'll share a few stories. Um, Firstly, uh, the, the very first thing that was so impactful to me, other than just like, wow, the, the, the empowerment and how I felt afterwards. But with my mom, um, my, my, mo my mother died, I think, but like three, three weeks maybe after I had finished the empowerments. And so, like you said in the beginning, I, it, it was a very kind of emotional time for me as I was going through the empowerments. I had, you know, my mother and the, the, just recently divorced, so there were lots of stuff going on. But for my mother, like in, in Empowerment 9, when I, one of the direct changes I made was that I, I just spontaneously wrote this letter to my mother because all of a sudden I had this like clarity about everything. You know, I was really clear about the dynamics of the relationship and how I, how I really felt. And anyway, I wrote this letter and I, um, my mom was across the country and she was already so close to death. I didn't have a chance to really directly communicate with her, but I read, wrote this letter and then I read it one night out in the ethers and it was amazing. First of all, writing the letter was amazing, but then speaking the words of the letter, it, it was like those 40 years of all of that angst and all of that pain and suffering. It, it wasn't there anymore. Like the, it was amazing. Like this openness, and like, oh, for the first time in my life, I could actually like breathe open hearted, relating, it, it present, feel it myself. And I knew she could feel it too. It was, it was just miraculous. So anyway, uh, even though we weren't you know, like face to face. And so then she, uh, it, like she died and we went to the funeral. And, you know, as a kid growing up too, I, I, I always wondered what it was going to be like when she died because I was like scared I wouldn't have any feelings or. You know, I had carried so much anger with me all these years. I was like, wow, what if I'm not even emotional about her dying or am I going to go to her funeral? Like, I had crazy thoughts, you know, it was crazy. But I did, of course, go to her funeral and I I uh, read the letter 
at her funeral because I, I felt like that was going to be like the best gift I can give to her and, and really, yeah, share how I, how I felt. And it was amazing me. Like I read the letter and there was like this hush <laughs> over the crowd. You know, I could really feel like everybody can kind of see in themselves what I was communicating in this letter for lack of a better way to describe it. And, and I just felt so connected to my mother and so connected to everybody in that room. It was really a powerful experience for me. I, and, uh, and afterwards, many people came up to me and were caught and, and just thanked me for, for reading that letter. They were so touched by it. And, and to me, that was like a really powerful example of the results. First for, for myself, how I was feeling internally and externally were actually the same for once in my life and uh, how connected I could feel to my mother and everybody in that room. So that, that was a very powerful experience for me. And then- oh, that's making me cry, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, yeah. really beautiful. It was beautiful. I mean, just to think about it, thank you for asking the question because then I can really think about it. And, and, uh, and yeah, so then with my ex-husband, we had just the most contentious divorce. It was horrible. Horrible, as you know, horrible, 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 and uh, so horrible. And um, but I was so happy that I had taken the empowerments, and I was so appreciative to have the support of Candace and of the practice of resting for short moments many times of the community and of my trainer. I, I wouldn't have been able to get through it without the the support and um, and just to to have the ability to rest with everything that was going on instead of biting back all the time and, and, you know, caustically re responding and all the, the, you know, the things that I, I, yeah, just that knee jerk reaction that was not loving. And so anyway, over the years, I, um, I just saw that my ex-husband wasn't changing at all. He was still the same person, but I was, able to be in relationship differently with myself and with him. Like instead of seeing everything wrong or bad or what I was going to blame him about, I started to, to just see him for who he was. Like the love that I always wanted was present regardless of what was going on. There was for me a pervasive recognition of deep, love, care, and concern. So obviously present, regardless of what was going on. And again, for me, that was that was just life changing and amazing. And that's what I wake up to in awe every day that this this powerful presence of love and, and compassion for, for another person, another being, and for a deep level of connection that no matter how I would have spoken about it conventionally, this that I feel every single day in my life, it's so far beyond, you know, like conventional love and relating. And so I, I found myself able to actually like love him in a way that is way more powerful today than it ever was when we were married. And the because I could rest with everything, there there was the ability to rely on open intelligence and open intelligence is skillful ways of of relating and of understanding the situation and, and the power of love that's always present there. I mean, that is authentic relating to me. Meeting somebody fully open, able to listen to them and, and to be connected with them fully and completely wherever they are. No blaming anymore. I, I mean, that's like gone from my life. How is that possible? It's like gone from my life. Uh, I, I just don't, I, I can't even go back there to that way of being, you know? And the undermutter has gone too, because I'm living authentically, but the, the, everything's in alignment with being able to just show up naturally and, and lovingly and be okay with that and not be affected. It's not affected by what other people are saying. In fact, it's almost empowered more and more by uh, what other people say and do. And so now I feel for the first time in my life that I actually have a loving relationship with uh, my ex-husband 
It doesn't mean I want to marry him again, <laughs> but I have an amazing relationship. And I think it amazes him too, because it just affects, you know, it just has an effect on him. I don't know if he really even knows it, but he's respectfully relating to me and communicating to me. And he calls me and asks for my opinion about things. And I mean, none of this was ever present before. And so now I could really like, I could think about him and I actually really love him and I have deep feelings for him. And that is a miracle. I just find that to be amazing. And uh, I just knew we were intended and purpose to live this way. I knew it all along. And I'm so thankful that I found Candace in the training because it proved, it proved that I was right all along. And now I can just be in relationship the way I, I always wanted to be. And it feels really, really good. And it's really natural. And, and uh, I'm just so happy to live life this way. That's all I could really say. And, and I think my family's really happy too, you know, even though, yeah, I, I see it with my, my daughters who are young women now, the kinds of conversations I can have with them and, and to be able to support them openly and, and not like force my opinion on them or, I'm just there. Like I am there openly and I, I can empower them to make the right decisions. I don't have to tell them what to do. You know, I could share my own direct experience with them, but always there's just this knowingness of, yeah, that they are completely capable and that they have my unconditional love and support regardless of, of anything. And uh, that is just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful way to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is just incredible to hear, Robin. I've cried. I've had the chills. You know? <laughs> I'm so happy to share. I never share like this. So it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, Thank it you. really, it, well, we, Robin and I had a conversation the other night. We, we talked for like two hours on the phone, um, which we haven't done in ages. And you were telling me just about, um, your daughter's birthday and how you were together with your ex-husband and his wife and your two kids and um, your ex-husband's parents who you're still are very close with. And that this is just, you know, you never thought this was possible even two years ago. And today this is, you know, the life that you're living. And I was like, okay, this has to be shared because it really, I mean, it's, and it's not just your experience. You know, we could interview thousands of people around the world and everyone can share a powerful direct experience of the complete transformation in relationship, how we, um, you know, really have resolved our past, our past pains in our family of origin, just naturally and effortlessly, you know, the relationships with our kids, with our parents, with our you know, spouses, um, just everyone and everything. And that it really starts with the relationship with who we are, taking that responsibility and just making the choice, really making that choice to show up for this incredible support, just like you did, that that just started the ball rolling. And now look at your life today. So thank you, Robin. So good to hear from you. And um if anyone else, you know, hears this and have had just that same response that I've had and, um, you know, you've just been considering the training, checking it out, hearing some talks. Um, we have a, a link that we'll be posting in a moment. You can sign up for a breakthrough call and talk to Johan or myself and, and um, you know, share your experience of, of what it's like for you now in terms of your relationships and different areas of your life. And um, we help support, you know, that choice and solution. And so, yeah, it's just incredible, Robin, to be able to, to really share this with others, what has been so generously given to us, the choice that we made and uh, what it's like now. So really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, Mia. I, I, um, I was happy to share, and I, I think if I could just say one other thing, I, I'm so, I think the thing that's just so amazing about the life today that I live is that 
I know that there's no like finish line with the, the, the depth of love that I feel for myself. That's amazing for myself and for other people. And, and, and that the, the, the more I'm in relationship with people, the, the, the more I feel the, this powerful connection. And, and it's with everybody. It's like I can be speaking to you or with the people here, but like that depth goes well, well beyond, you know, the, the complete strange. I can meet a complete stranger on the street and feel completely connected to that person and, and listen to them in a way that I know is going to powerfully affect them. And, and just being met by somebody who, who will listen to them. And I'm just so thankful that I have the tools to, you know, live life this way and that it, it feels so much lighter, you know, like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm so happy to not be so defended and, and just so bristly and, and, and so short with people and all those ways that I used to be like so happy to not live that way and not even think about it anymore. And to know I can't live that way any longer. To me, that's just, it's just a beautiful gift that, that, that the empowerments have given me, that Candace has given me, that the community has given me. And, and uh, I, I just, yeah, I can't say enough about just my great good fortune to come across the, the training and, and to, to have committed to this life, you know, to have made this choice. Yeah, I really want to live my life authentically in the way that I, I can I stay connected to the mainstay. So yeah, I'm just really happy. I wake up every morning and I'm just, thank you very much. I'm very happy. <laughs> and I hope I, I hope I can help others. You know, that's, that's how I live my life today. It's amazing. So yeah, thank you so much. Well, I think you really just did in this uh, interview and just your open hearted sharing and being really specific and now living a life of authenticity. Um, thank you, Robin. And thank you, of course, to, to Candace and all of you. It's so nice to, to be together today from around the world. We see that there are um, people uh, coming in from just many locations and that this is just all available to us no matter where we live, uh, what language we speak, how old we are, you know, what educational background we have, what suffering is going on for us right now that we all have an equal opportunity to know and live the authentic life that you were speaking to. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.